The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Let's do this. Oh, Frank. Can't we just leave him? He'll come out when he's hungry. It's gonna be another fight. I'm done cutting Superman breaks. This time I'm gonna freak his got bruises from the last time. Gentlemen, let me. Doctor, no you don't. He's dangerous. He knows me. Stay here. Oh. I'm so worried. Why did you run away? Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, but you can't stay here. Aren't you hungry? You haven't eaten in hours. Oh, oh, they, they, they oh. Come on, let's get you out of here. I thought I told you to wait outside. Get away from me, you nut! Are you? Why didn't you call? He was pawing you. It wasn't doing anything. Yeah, right. These guys are all the same. Don't let him fool you. He's not so pretty now, is he? Report me, and the next time I won't be so gentle. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. USS Lexington has arrived. Admiral Withrow would like to see you immediately. Acknowledged. Please inform the Admiral I'm on my way. Commander Spock reporting as ordered. Command, Commander. Dismissed. Have a seat, Spock. Operational status of the Enterprise. Vessel and crew operating at peak efficiency, sir. And your acting commander? Also at peak efficiency. Good. Spock, he's been missing for over a month. You've searched every square inch in Nimbus 3 and the surrounding planets. Captain Kirk is not here. A logical assumption, but not yet conclusive. Look, 
Starfleet has concerns. Nimbus 3 is considered an open planet. Everyone is welcome provided they don't upset the peace, which makes having an armed Federation heavy cruiser hanging in orbit a month hard to justify. The Lexington is here to patrol the region as a show of strength. The Enterprise will be joining us on the patrol line. Admiral, it is imperative that we understand what happened. He was on the planet, he disappeared. How was his security compromised and by whom? We must find him to understand what happened. Otherwise, Captain Kirk might not be the only Starfleet officer at risk. Mr. Spock, has it occurred to you that Jim Kirk may be deceased? Yes, but we have no evidence to support that theory. Admiral, has it occurred to you that Captain Kirk's disappearance might have something to do with the increased activities of the Klingon fleet along the mutual borders? Yes, yes it has, and it has been discussed. It's possible the Klingons may be operating under the belief that by removing Captain Kirk from the equation, it would reduce the military effectiveness of the Enterprise. No offense to your own considerable skills, Commander, but the Enterprise without Kirk on the bridge, not the same ship. No, sir, it is not. Which is why we must continue the search. Starfleet's priorities are clear. The Enterprise is needed on the patrol line immediately. Those are your orders. Admiral, with all due respect. Non-negotiable, Commander. Those are your orders. I'm sorry, Spock. But if the Klingons are to take us seriously, they have to know that both the Lexington and the Enterprise are under strong, capable command. As of this Stardate Commander, you are the captain of the Enterprise. Understood, sir. Dismissed. The devil's taking so long. Mr. Spock beamed back from the Lexington 20 minutes ago. I'm sure he's on his way. Well, I wish he'd hurry it up. It's damned inconsiderate. Calling a senior officer's meeting at this hour? Who does he think he is? Lieutenant, you are relieved. Attention all hands, this is Commander Spock. Under order of Admiral Withrow, I have been placed in command of the USS Enterprise as its captain. We have been ordered to discontinue search and pick up patrol efforts on the Klingon border. All stations prepare for warp speed. Spock out. In Zim Walking Bear, plot a course to Starbase 24. Upon arrival, you will implement a standard patrol pattern between there and Sherman's planet. Setting course. Sir, that's two months away. 51 days at warp 7. Mr. Scott, I assume you can maintain warp 7? I can. I. I can give you that kind of power. Spock? Are you out of your Vulcan mind? We can't leave here without finding out what happened to Jim. I have my orders. Orders? To hell with orders! That will be all, Dr. McCoy. My orders but are not your concern. What happens in sickbay is... Fuck! Dismissed. Mr. Scott, you will report to engineering for the duration of the journey. Aye, Mr. Spock. Captain Spock. Aye. Captain Spock. Navigation. Course laden. All systems nominal. Ready for maximum warp. Mr. Sulu. At your order. Captain. Proceed.
It's me. It's him. Isolation ward. And you are? I'm Dr. Hamlin. Remember? <sighs> You're in a hospital. A hospital? How long? Almost two weeks now. Don't you remember? I was outside. Lost. Cold. And then what? Two security guards found me. No, no, that's not right. They... They took it from me. Who? Who hurt you? I, I, I don't know, but something is missing. There were two policemen. They found you. They brought you here. Do you remember? Here? What is this hospital? What happened to me? It's called amnesia. Do you remember anything? No. No. They... They did this. They... They took it! The difference being that on that evening half a year ago, Mr. Wilson's flight was terminated by the onslaught... Come on, Jimmy. You need to eat something. Uh, that's supposed to be cold. I'm so sorry. I'll get you fresh. Hey, man. Ain't you a colonel or something? I've been watching you. Hey, there you are. Come on. You're a colonel. I know you are. Listen, you can help me get out of this place. I know you. Don't be cruel to me. I'm sick of this mess. Don't worry about that guy. He's been here forever. He thinks he's Elvis. I hate that guy. better. <laughs> Almost tastes real. You don't think it's real? Red alert! What? Jimmy, it's just the lights out, Val. Jimmy, where are you going? I have to get to the bridge. It's a red alert. Stay here. This is all wrong. I needed to. It's gone. Almost. Almost. Who am I? Take it one day at a time. It will get better. I promise. Because you will get better. Captain Spock? What is it, Doctor? Do you know what day it is? Since you have access to the ship's chronometer, I assume that is a rhetorical question. That's progress. I figured you'd quote me the time down to the second. If you wish. It has been 74.356 days since Captain Kirk's reported disappearance. 
Is that the answer you were looking for? How can someone as brilliant as you be so damn stupid? I'm a Vulcan. That's an explanation, not an excuse. You're a captain now. Be one. Console your crew, damn it. Perhaps my obvious genetic contrast is still, even now, lost on you. You're half-human too, so be half-human for a minute. I know it's a stretch. This crew is shattered. They need leadership. Compassionate leadership. Compassion? It means to suffer with, Spock. You saying you're not suffering too? I'm in control of my emotion. I expect my crew to do the same. We all need healing, Spock. That is the job of the ship's doctor. Wrong! A starship captain sets the emotional tone for his crew, and you're doing a damn poor job. I it. see. Withrow made you captain of the Enterprise. What does that tell you about the official status of James T. Kirk? I don't like it either, but we have to face facts. Facts? Doctor, we have no evidence. You've taken his command. How do you think his crew feels about that Get spot? Out of I don't way. think so. You always said you didn't want the captain's chair, but you sure took it. I Pastor. took command for the mission. Bull, you took it for command. I am in command of the Enterprise, Doctor. Why or how, it does not matter. Is that clear? Is that clear, Doctor? May I be excused, Captain? Dr. McCoy, please. Schedule a memorial service for Captain Kirk. Thank you. I will not attend. Could sit. Songs aren't stoned and I haven't had enough. Did you really say all that to him? Doctor, I don't know whether to slap your back or your face. Don't even think about it. You've been in enough fights. He's right, you know. He's a captain now. Well, then he should start acting like one. Is that what you really want? Me neither. I asked for a transfer. And? Starfleet refused. Spock wouldn't allow it. Your departure would negatively impact the efficiency of this vessel's medical services. Nicest thing he ever said to me. I... You know what really scares me, Doctor? I'm gonna go for a few hours. Sometimes a whole day. Without thinking about cotton Kirk. I know what you mean. We're getting used to the new normal. Hi. And if I'm forgetting, and you're forgetting, it's good your memorial service. Is that a good way of saying that you think Jim Kirk's really dead? Even James T. Kirk can't cheat the law of averages forever. You both know that, Scott. is dead. Long live the captain.
core. Captain James Tiberius Kirk. So very good to see you again. What is this? Klingon hospitality. Kidnapping? You trying to start a war? Oh, on the contrary. I'm going to end one before it ever begins. With just a little cheating. Cheating? Isn't that dishonorable? No. Losing is dishonorable. We do have some blood wine, Captain. I assure you, it isn't drugged. Thank you. I'll pass. All of this unpleasantness could have been avoided. A simple answer to a simple question. Surely you can understand the logic in that. If it's the logic you want, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> ah yes, your Vulcan comrade. Equally stubborn, as I recall. But you, Captain, you are not as equally resilient. My associates have asked you this many times. I will ask only once. Thank you, that'd be a great time saver. Where is the planet known as Gateway? I'm only going to answer this once. It's a Starfleet secret. Thank you. Now that we have concluded the formal part of our inquiry, we can move on to the next phase. <laughs> <laughs> I presume the rest of your crew is at the memorial service. Yes, sir. I volunteer to stay at the con. Commendable, but unnecessary. You were relieved, Lieutenant. Join your crewmates. Thank you. this chapel. Too much time spent here lately. That's one way to see it. Yeah, and what's yours? A place of peace. Fall in. with deep sadness and proud honor that we gather here today to remember James C. Kirk. It'd be easier if we knew how he died. There were a body to weep over. But that's a luxury not afforded us. So we grieve in the absence of answers. But we grieve because we must. 
because we are human. And this is what humans do. We grieve the loss of a good man, a good friend. And the best damned officer in the fleet. Grief is a part of life, but not its master. Today we mourn, tomorrow we move on. That's the way James T. Kirk would want it. We will honor his memory by honoring his ship and by serving the captain who leads her now. That's what James T. Kirk would have us do. That's how we can remember it best. Turn up. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. controls for the device. There has to be a way. You know how this thing works. Tell me. You can tell me now, or you can tell my mind sifter. No, no, please. It won't help you. It won't. Your Federation would use this time weapon to destroy the Klingon Empire. And you dare to beg me for mercy? If we wanted to, we already would have. We don't want to fight you, Kor. That is why you will lose. Imagine just, just, just for a moment that there's another way, a way for both sides to win. Insanity, peace is for cowards. No, sometimes it takes more courage not to fight. I will conquer you, and then we will see who falls from the pages of history. Go to hell. <laughs> I can send you there with just one word, Captain. <laughs> there. You see the horror of my mind, sister. I utter your rank and you suffer. Imagine what would happen if I say your entire name. Guardian, do you hear me? I hear all. That's it? You just speak to it? Sir, it appears to be responding only to him. Your species is weak because you lack the courage to commit genocide. Now, give me access to Earth's past. Guardian, show me Earth's past. Behold. Incredible. 
Are you recording? Yes, sir. But years pass rapidly. We will need more time to analyze. Time? It's a time portal, you fool. We have all the time we need. It doesn't matter. I have had enough of you, Captain James T. Kirk. Many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come. His grace hath brought me safe. You're feeling better today. It's James. Jim. I see. Jim. I like that better. From now on, I'll call you Jim. Uh, how do you feel? Better. Just wish I could remember. Why am I locked in this room? You've had some issues. Did I hurt anyone? Don't worry about that. No, please, Hamlin, tell me. I wouldn't be here if we thought you were dangerous. Do you want to go outside? Outside? Yes. Walk under the trees, feel the sun on your face. I think it will do you good. But promise me you won't run away. I promise. Here. Put on the sweater. Is something wrong? No, no, I just... For a moment... It's not important. Let's go inside. It's a nice day. How long have I been here? Almost five weeks now. I have to get back. Where? I don't know. I can't remember, but I have to get back. It's... it's important. It's gonna take time, Jim. I have all the time in the world. No, that's not right. I, I have to get back. Jim, you're outside. Enjoy the sun, the air and the trees, the grass. Yes. Trees, grass, ecology. It's one of my favorite things about shore leave. Shore leave? You're on a ship? You know, this planet reminds me of Omicron City 3. Such a beautiful world. It's too bad we can't go back. This is too bad. It's a beautiful planet. Not now. Berthold rays would... No. You couldn't know. Why would you say that? Let go of me, please, Jim. No, you couldn't know. Jim, you're hurting me. Let go now. I'm sorry, Hamlin. I, did, I didn't mean to hurt you. It's okay. I'm fine. No, let me help you. I'll call sick bay. It's gone. My communicator's gone. Jim, calm down. You didn't have any communicator. But I, I have... And I don't need to go to any sick bay. It was there. I almost remembered it all and then... Is that why I'm in that room? Did I hurt you before? You have never hurt me. But you have fought struggled with the orderlies did i hurt them not too much we should go inside
He's not delusional. I know it seems that way, but there's something real there. Well, that's your opinion. This file. <laughs> this file. He's not rational. And he's had violent episodes. He hasn't had a Thorazine injection in over a week. He hasn't needed it. Despite what you call his delusional convictions, he is appropriate. He knows where he is. He knows why. He, he cares about not hurting people. He knows why he's here. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, the thing about these psychopaths, they're cunning. They know how to manipulate people. I have a degree too, Dr. Wright. There's something else. I've looked into this Jim Doe. There are no military records. There are no fingerprint files. And there are no missing persons report anywhere. He was found by policemen outside of town, wandering around. He's got to have local roots somehow. He didn't just fall from the sky. What if we ran his picture in the paper? Maybe he was missing for months. Maybe his people think that he's dead. Get somebody to take him off our hands. We could get him out of here. All right, try it. But I think you're getting too involved. I think you're losing your impartiality. I, I say this for your own good, Doctor. You can't afford to show too much compassion and help you do your job. Is this mine? It's what you were wearing when you first came here. Something. Oh, Jack. I'm a doctor. I've seen it all before. Remember what I told you? We're going to go to Dr. Wright's office and there will be a photographer to take your picture. They'll put your picture in the paper and maybe someone will recognize you. And that will help your people find you. Okay. Ready. Let me fix your hair. Let her go. You. You. No. No. Jim. We can't. Let's get you to a barber. <laughs> In here, Jim, it's okay. Pleased to meet you. It's Jim, and there's nothing wrong with my hearing. Oh, sorry. That's it? Just Jim? Tell me, Jim. How long have you been staying here? August 25th. This year? 58, yes. So, five weeks then. Tell me, Jim. Is there anything else you remember? No. All right. Why don't we just take your picture, then we'll call it a day. Hey.
again. That'll do, Doctor. It'll run in tomorrow's paper. Okay. Doctor? Yes, Jim. I'm Dr. Leonard Wright. I'm the chief medical officer at this institution. Dr. Leonard? Hmm. Hmm. Bones? Hmm? No. You're not Bones. Is that a name? McCoy. My doctor's name is McCoy. Dr. Leonard McCoy. He's my chief medical officer. And you are? Captain James T. Kirk. Get your orderlies up your mouth. And don't drink that. Are you kidding, Doc? Front page. Ah! Don't let him bite you. Come on, let's go eat. Paul, oh, you're gonna pay for that. Let's take it down. You are taking him to his room, right? Mm, of course. You asked to see me, Captain? Yes, Doctor. Thank you for coming. Please, have a seat. May I offer you a beverage? A Vulcan beverage? No, thanks. I wanted to thank you for what you said at the memorial service. Spock, I... I owe you an apology. It was wrong, the way I treated you. I'm supposed to be the captain's doctor, too. You were closer to Jim than anyone. You have to be feeling it worse than anyone, doctor. I can be a good listener for your human half. But can you listen in Vulcan? You know I can't. Let me help you. Uh, I don't think so. Thanks, but I need to keep a human perspective. Of course. You're right. I'm going to regret this later. Hmm. Different than I expected. Doctor, we have known each other a long time. We have argued a great deal. This time, I need you to trust me. Well, I've always trusted your logic. If I've disagreed with your choices, it's because sometimes logic isn't enough. There is a logic to emotion as well. You have always been a staunch advocate of that. I assume that's a compliment. What I'm saying is that I understand deeply how your sense of compassion compels you. I'm considering a course of action that will require us to have complete trust in each other. To be blunt, Doctor, I will need you. We will need each other. I do trust you because I know you. And I know that you wouldn't ask unless it was important. And because, uh, in spite of myself, I'm actually starting to like you. Just wanted to see the look on your face. Now let me ask you if uh, you were to express a moment of honest affection, what would you say? Vulcans do not indulge in affection. But I would say I respect you. I respect you, Captain. 
search complete, search parameter found. Something wrong? Doctor, come with me. Lieutenant, lock down the bridge. What I am about to do is in direct violation of Starfleet orders. I cannot reveal the reason at this time. Anyone who objects may leave the bridge now. It will not be held against you. If I may, Captain, I believe there's an old Earth saying, we will all hang together, or surely we will all hang separately. Very well. Ends in plot, of course, to Gateway. Course plotted, sir. ETA in seven hours, 13 minutes, present speed. Lieutenant Uhura, send an uncoded message to Starfleet Command. Notify them of our destination, but send no replies. Sir. You heard the order, Lieutenant. Sir, if you do that, every ship in the area is bound to try to intercept us. Indeed. As with Captain Kirk, I expect you to trust my orders. Aye, aye, sir. Proceed. Report. Sir, Starfleet Command has ordered that you return to base and surrender this ship. USS Lexington, Leonov, and Hawking on intercept course. As expected. Sir, I'm picking up temporal disturbances on the planet's surface. That will be the Guardian of Forever. Mr. Sulu, bring us to synchronous orbit. Aye, sir. And bring over. Captain. The devil are they doing here? Red alert. Sir, they've raised their shields but are not charged weapons. We may have surprised them, Captain. Hail the Lieutenant. Channel open. Klingon vessel, this is the USS Enterprise, Captain Spock in command. You are in Federation space and are in violation of treaty. You are ordered to withdraw to Klingon space immediately. No response, sir. Klingon vessel, we are waiting your reply. Bring us up. Ready all weapons and cloaking device. Sir, they're locking disruptors and arming photon torpedoes. Hold position. Lock and attack pattern Gamma 3. Execute on my command. Stand by evasive. Mr. Scott, all power to four shields. Aye, sir. They're attacking. Now, Sulu. gone into warp on course for Klingon space Klingons are no fools strategy it is always about strategy they know our thinking we know theirs it is time for us to find another way a way that lets us stop fighting each other captain before going into warp the Klingon sent a very strange message it reads you'll never find him find who Sir, the Lexington is hailing us. On screen. Very interesting, Captain Spock. You planned this quite well. It was the logical thing to do. However, you disobeyed direct orders, and I had no choice but to take you into custody for gross insubordination. We'll be alongside in 60 minutes. Will that be enough time? Yes, Admiral. 
Why chick to now? Time enough for what? Transporter room. Prepare to beam down landing party to planet's surface. Do you wish to accompany me, Doctor? Ryan, stop me. I will assume your response to be in the affirmative. Mr. Sulu, you have the con. So he went through the Guardian. Okay, but there's just one thing, Mr. Spock. James T. Kirk never would have given up the location of this world. Klingons would have used mind sifter technology. How can you possibly know that? A psychic link, Doctor. The result of many mind melts throughout the years. Jim has been calling out to me since the day he vanished. I needed time to work through the mental images. The computer archive search. Until now, I did not know where or when he was. When, Captain? The computer archive search found a newspaper article from Earth, 1958. Jim was found by authorities and taken to an asylum. If you knew he was alive, why didn't you say something? Would you believe me, Doctor? With the Admiral? Spock? Knowing what you knew? Hearing Jim calling out to you in your mind all this time? How'd you endure it? So instead you disobeyed orders, baited three Federation ships into foulness to intimidate the Klingons that you Theorize be here. That was the logic of the situation, Doctor. Vulcan logic. A logic that must be listened to. In Vulcan. Transporter ready, Captain. Energize. Dr. Bones? Bones. Dr. Hamlin, is it? Let me, uh... He's my patient. He's mine, too. Thank you for taking care of him. Do you know what's wrong with him? I do, and the cure hasn't been invented yet. Not here, anyway. What is that? What did you just do? Shot a B12. You care about him? As a patient, yes. That'd be a first. Dr. Bones. McCoy. Dr. McCoy, I am so sick of arrogant men. Assuming that women are weaklings, incapable of maintaining a professional standard of behavior. He is Sorry. my patient, nothing more. I wasn't talking about you, I was talking about him. But, uh, you're right. Someday it'll be better. Jim, listen to my voice. It's me. Look at me. Bones. Is it really you? I'm here to take you home. Where? Where? Please. I thought I made that plane. It's home. Where? Please tell me. I have to you know. You wouldn't believe me. I need to you know. You wouldn't believe me. Time to go. Jim. It's Park. So he was telling the truth. Yes. All that talk about stars and planets. He was telling the truth. 
Then take me with you. I want to go where my skills as a doctor will be respected. I'm sorry, Doctor. It would disrupt the time stream. Doctor, you gotta stay here and make a difference in your own time. Otherwise, uh, it won't get better. What if I told you that he that he needs me, that he depend right, he's dependent on me? Just sit down. What if I told you that I love him? Love is irrelevant, Doctor. I don't want his love. I just want to be respected. I want to make a difference. You uh, just saved the finest captain in Starfleet. You can be proud of that. Dr. Hamlin, Jim was kidnapped. He was brutally tortured. They have taken his memories, his identity. If they have followed previous practice, they have imprinted him to suffer in agony at the very mention of his name. We have the technology to undo this. He will be okay. But you... You will be alone. In a very different place, a very strange place. Dr. McCoy is right. Your place is here. I believe that your presence here in this time is critical to achieving the respect all in your gender deserve. Thank you. I understand. Jim, you're gonna be safe now. It's time for you to go. Going home? Yeah. Dr. Bones and Mr. Spock are taking you home. Jim, ah, we gotta go. I understand. I suppose this is where you swear me to silence. Ask me to forget that I haven't met you or found out where you're from. Or the hope that I have for the future. I would not ask that. But, if you permit me, I can ease your pain. Again. Two weeks since we rushed to K7 from Gateway. No explanation. No orders. Starfleet just sticks us out here, station keeping. Can't even swing a little surely. Perhaps a Klingon border incursion would have been better. There's a message coming through. It's from Admiral Withrow aboard the Lexington. Patrol orders. At last. That's strange. We're being told to stand by. The captain is beaming over. We need an admiral to tell us the captain is back aboard. It's not like Spock to stand on ceremony. <sighs> Captain. Captain! Captain! All right, all right, that's enough. Remember, you're not fit for duty until I say so. To sick bay with you, Jim. I'll be there in a minute. Oh, what are we all standing around for? There's work to do. Welcome back, Captain. I missed you. I didn't realize how much. Until now. Come. Captain. 
just back. So I was gone three months? In our time stream, yes. However, the Guardian was able to put us within five weeks of your arrival on Earth. Long enough. Too long. So, Withrow gave you your own ship. Why did you accept? My place is here. Still, the way you handle those Klingons? They're gonna be even more trouble now that they know about Gateway. The Guardian is aware that not all who approach have good intentions. Will it allow us to supply a security force? No. But it would allow a research team, representing all governments in the Quadrant. Spock? I don't know what else to say except... Thank you. That is unnecessary, sir. I don't think so. You saved history. You saved the Federation, and... You saved me. You're being prideful, Mr. Spock. Unlikely. Well, thank you for indulging in my human sentiment. Perhaps you will indulge in a sentiment of my own. And that is? I respect you, Jim. Bridge to Captain Kirk. There is a Priority One message from Starfleet Command for you, sir. Captain Kirk here. Put it on my monitor. Welcome home, Jim. Welcome home. <laughs>